Hey everyone, welcome to the first part of the new series. In this series, we'll be looking into the historical inspirations of many Warhammer Fantasy factions. I think one of the more interesting aspects of Warhammer Fantasy is that it takes much more inspiration from our real world than other popular fantasy settings. I know seeing Fantasy Lanschnecht was part of what sold me on the franchise. Speaking of Lanschnecht, let's look into the inspiration for the Empire of Man. The Empire is a heavily decentralized Germanic Empire of several elector counts who elect an emperor to lead the Empire. The Empire is very similar to the Holy Roman Empire around the Renaissance period. The Holy Roman Empire was also a decentralized union of Germanic states that elected an emperor to lead them. The Holy Roman Empire was much more decentralized than the Empire of Man, though. The clothing soldiers the Empire wear is very similar to the style of clothing Germanic mercenaries called Lanschnecht would wear. Here's some examples of the Empire uniforms and the Lanschnecht uniforms. As you can see, they have a, a lot of similarities, like the floppy hats, the flamboyant bright colors, the sort of like frilly, floppy sleeves on the arms and legs. Overall, it was a really goofy outfit, but one that was used historically. I've seen people argue there's also some inspiration from Spain as well, referring to Spanish Teresio specifically, but I think it's a bit of a stretch. The language of the Empire Reichspiel is some clear German inspiration. Most Empire settlements have very German sounding names like Altdorf or Mittenheim. It's pretty obvious that they're German analogs. The Empire of Anne and the Holy Roman Empire even have similar foundings. The Holy Roman Empire was created by Charlemagne who conquered a significant portion of Europe and established the Holy Roman Empire as a significant power in Europe. He'd fight a massive battle in the south of modern day France, stopping the Andalusians who were located in modern day Spain from advancing further into Europe. Eventually his empire would decay though and become a decentralized mess. There's a fun expansion about him for Total War Attila if you're into that. Sigmar's founding of the empire is kind of similar. Sigmar is like Charlemagne with a bit of Conan the Barbarian and Thorbixton. He was a great warrior who united most of the tribes of men into an empire. He stopped a southern invasion and eventually his empire would fall into a state of decay much like Charlemagne's. It's not a perfect comparison, but the inspiration is clear. The province of Reichland seems to be mostly inspired by Austria and the Habsburg dynasty. Their main colors are red and white like Austria. Reichland has also been emperors of the empire often, just like Austria's Habsburg dynasty were constantly emperors of the Holy Roman Empire. It's also located on the south of the empire like Austria was in the Holy Roman Empire. I also see a little bit of inspiration from Prussia considering Prussia and Reichland's flags are very similar. Reichland is also known for their highly disciplined military which aids in the Prussian comparison. Prussia was known for its disciplined elite army. It was even referred to as an army with a state at one point. Prussia would later go on to unite Germany, so Reichland is a mix of two of the more influential German states throughout history. The ex-province of Marienburg isn't traditionally German like the rest of the empire, it's more based off of the Netherlands who was a part of the Holy Roman Empire for some time before going off to do their own merchant republic stuff. They're also geographically speaking similar to where the Dutch would be. Marienburger names are also much more Dutch sounding than German, I mean we got names like Jan van de Kuipers which are pretty clearly Dutch. Enough time has been spent on the Empire of Man though. Let's move on to another human faction. We'll be discussing the inspirations behind the Kingdom of Britonia. A lot of people think this one's obvious. They're in medieval France with an Arthurian coat of paint. I mean they have a Joan of Arc analog so it can't be that deep right? Well, I think it goes a bit deeper than that. Bretonia is a land that heavily values chivalry with an upper class of heavy French accents and a lower class that are treated like dirt and have English accents. I think it could be argued that Bretonia is at least partially inspired by medieval England or the Angevin Empire. The nobility of England were heavily French for the longest time. I think many people forget that William the Conqueror was the Duke of Normandy and so he spoke French. The first king of England to actually be raised in England was Henry III who was born in 1207. England was conquered by William the Conqueror in 1066. That's over 100 years of English kings not being raised in England. It took about three centuries for the English government to speak English instead of French, so I'm sure you can see the connection. We have a heavily French nobility with English peasantry in Bretonia and England. The Bretonians also use longbows which are famously used by England. So I guess what this little tangent was meaning to say is that Bretonia is not just France but with Arthurian paint, it's more like a straight up mix of medieval France and England. Next up we got the Dawi or Dwarfs of Warhammer. Now, there's an obvious inspiration from Tolkien's dwarves here, but we're going for historical inspirations, not literary. I did acknowledge it though. The Dawi, aesthetically speaking, remind me of Anglo-Saxon warriors and Norse warriors, but culturally speaking, dwarves are kind of like a post-industrialization Northern England or Scotland, perhaps. They love their ale and are heavily industrialized with a nice mining culture. Going into depth a little about the uh, visual comparisons of the Anglo-Saxons and the Norsemen, uh, the dwarves, of course, have the classical Viking pop culture horns on their helmet type thing going on. Um, they have the big beards, the rune stuff. We all know that. We know there's an, a Norse inspiration on the dwarves, but something I think that gets overlooked is the actual Anglo-Saxon inspiration. And while there is a bit of overlap with the Norse with Anglo-Saxon stuff, I still think it's worth noting. For example, the Ironbreakers um, have the facial plating on them which is kind of similar to some Anglo-Saxon warriors who had helmets that had like these facial platings on them, as you can see here. Um, the dwarf warriors inside Total War Warhammer 
their armor kind of looks like that of Anglo-Saxon warriors and them having the rounded shields is while similar to the Vikings and the Norsemen, it's also kind of similar to the Anglo-Saxons. And I think if you believe the comparison of dwarves being Northern English and the high elves being Southern English, this could certainly add to that and hold up. I've seen the dwarves be compared to the Romans as a sort of precursor civilization. Pancreas Network has a good video about that if you're interested, but to summarize what he said, they were once a massive continent spanning empire that the modern humans take a lot from, just like how a lot of post-Roman European civilizations learned a lot from Rome. On a more comedic side note, I've seen people compare the dwarves to North Korea, which is just silly. So, since we're on the topic of dwarves, let's move on to the scary cousins the Dawis are or Chaos Dwarves. The Chaos Dwarves, aesthetically speaking, seem to be inspired by Mesopotamian cultures. Their architecture looks quite reminiscent of it with their big ziggurats and such. Their clothing and hats are also inspired by Mesopotamian culture, but it's a lot harder to see it in the clothing because the beards cover their outfits. However, we can see they sort of have the same like sort of scaled armor type thing, although I'd say it's uh, it's not like the best comparison, but it's there. However, they do definitely have the Mesopotamian crazy hats. Like this hat that looks like an upside down banana. One of the monsters they can feel, the Lamassu, is literally ripped from ancient Mesopotamian mythology. Even their beards are styled differently from their cousins to show their Mesopotamian roots. I absolutely adore their aesthetics. As for the industrialization of mass slavery, I attribute that to its literary inspiration from Mordor. Next up, we got the red-headed stepchildren of the ruinous powers, the Beastmen. Now, the Beastmen are pretty awful, and I don't really think they're based on a certain civilization per se. They're more representative of how the Romans saw barbarians or pop culture see barbarians. The Beastmen are primitive despoilers and raiders who just hate civilization and will do anything to stop it. They revel in bloodshed and just want to bring others down to their level. So they technically have an inspiration, but it's not really a civilization, more of an idea. We could take this idea to another level and maybe compare them to middle-aged Christian depictions of demons, but it feels a bit vague to me. There certainly is a resemblance though. Speaking of people who like to plunder, the Orcs. The Orcs of Warhammer Fantasy have been said to be inspired by soccer, or if you're not American, football. Hooligans. They're rowdy, love a drink and a good fight. They love fighting, but hate losing and will run off when things aren't going in their favor. Now, I thought it was really ridiculous they're based off of soccer hooligans, but believe it or not, there are quite a few cases of massive fights happening over soccer games. I mean, we have cases where over 80 to 100 dudes are being arrested for starting massive riots or brawls over soccer of all things, especially during the 90s. There's also an awful RTS about soccer hooligans called Hooligans. Of course, the soccer hooligan orcs aren't the only kind of orc there is. There's also the savage orcs. The savage orcs don't really seem to be based on a specific tribal culture as far as I can see, but admittedly, this is not my strong suit. They feel more like a generic representation of tribal societies you'd see on TV like in Pirates of the Caribbean or something. They have lots of pain on their bodies, an obsession of bones, and practice some form of shamanism. If someone knows more, please let me know in the comments. It doesn't seem like there's any specific inspiration though as far as I can see. We've looked at the orcs, so it's only right we take a look at their smaller, smarter, and arguably much meaner little cousins, the goblins. There are a couple of different goblin subcultures, but for now we're focusing on the general plains gobbo. These goblins are masters of domesticating and riding wolves into battle. They travel nomadically raiding enemy territories and sacking their lands. They're pretty bright, but their tech is nothing too impressive compared to like, I don't know, the empire or the dwarves. I'd like to say they take a bit of inspiration from horse raiders during the late Roman period like the Huns and the Avars. Heck, we even got a goblin character named Gatilla the Hunter. You know, like Attila the Hun. Attila devastated the Western Roman Empire and was very proficient with cavalry like Gatilla, who ravaged the badlands of his wolf riders. I also think there's some clear inspiration based on what they wear. Their armor is very Central Asian looking, which leads some people to think the goblins are Mongol inspired, but I think this is more fitting. The goblins never established a massive empire and don't control some sort of silk road. And while they have cavalry archers, it's not their specialty or anything. You know who does fill most of those boxes though? The Hobgoblin Khanate. I mean, just based off the name, it's pretty obvious what their inspiration is. The Hobgoblin Khanate is ruled by Hobgobla Khan. They have hordes of wolf riders and raid the Cathay and the lands around them. They fit the Mongol theme much better and their aesthetic shows it. They're basically just the Mongols, but green, evil, and wolf lovers. Hobgoblins being comically evil and backstabby could be a representation of how terrified Europeans and particularly Russian nations felt of the Mongols, but that's a bit of a stretch. Still, they're a fun group overall and I hope to see more of them with Cathay's lore being expanded upon. The last faction we'll be discussing in this video are the Ogre Kingdoms. They, just like the goblins, are compared to the Mongols because they're nomadic conquerors who lean a bit into the Mongol look. I mean, look at their beautiful mustaches. And hey, I'll be the first to admit, there's definitely some inspiration aesthetically, but I think what I have in mind overshadows that. 
I think the Ogre Kingdoms are actually more inspired by Neanderthals and the Ice Age in general. They're big, strong, nomadic, primitive humanoids who live in a snowy area with Ice Age looking animals. I mean, for goodness sake, one of their pets or well, I don't know if you'd call them pets, but you know, one of the things they can field is a saber tusk, which is basically just a saber tooth tiger, but bigger and much more fierce. And on top of that, ogres prefer to use weapons like clubs and primitive weapons. They're cannibalistic. They're kind of like proto Ice Age humans or Neanderthals. And so I think there's probably a mix of influence there, but I'm leaning much more towards the Neanderthal school of thought. That'll be it for part one of Warhammer Fantasy's historical and cultural inspirations. I was rewatching the documentary Monarchy about the British monarchy and had a flair of inspiration. It's a good documentary as long as you watch the British version. The American version is just watered down and not as interesting. Honestly, I don't even know why it exists. I'm very excited for Warhammer the Old World. I'm actually in the process of painting some goblins and chaos dwarves for it. The chaos dwarves are more for fun though. Anyways, if you like this video, then I suggest you jump further down the Warhammer rabbit hole.